Sandra Segovia Show. This is the Andre Segovia Show, and I am your host, Andre Segovia, the honest broker. Welcome to this, the first episode of August. August. Let that one sink in. I mean, summer is almost done, folks. This is the last month, the only month without any holidays or breaks or any other sort because everybody had babies this month, so we have a bunch of birthdays. So plan up for that because my birthday is also at the end of this month. And as I was reflecting on this summer, um, not much happened, actually. Just really been busy at work. I mean, July really sucked. You probably heard me talk about that before. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll, you probably heard me vent about uh, summer. You can go check that out if you haven't already. But being that it's the first episode of the, of the month, you know what that means. It's time for the news roundup. In this case, for the month of July. And as I'm thinking about this, I should have a jingle, huh? I should look into that. Give me some feedback if you like the sound of that. But I'm thinking that this special segment deserves its own jingle. Maybe even Real Estate 101 on debunking Real Estate Myths. But let's not go that direction. Let's talk about the news of July. And the news of July was basically a bunch of different outlets reporting basically almost on the same thing and there wasn't really much of anything different like the month of june was whereas july was just jam-packed with news and i kept getting articles every single day that i started putting to the stack of stuff that i wanted to, to go over but as i was compiling everything i'm like is this the same thing so it is the same thing so i'm gonna highlight the some of the headlines that uh, are basically the same thing but give a little bit more time as to certain uh elements that actually influence some of the um, episodes i have coming up for the month of uh, for the month of august including an interview with a generation z member a generation z are those that born after 1997 june uh, january 1st 1997 so um i wanted to talk to them about social media and we'll get to that in a moment first if you have not been listening to me recently then you probably missed my announcements about the big real estate events coming next month in september they're around mid-september next month we got the first one up it's the landlord uh, conference or also known as the multi-million dollar trade show and this is a free event it's an all-day event at los angeles convention center information and how to how to register are available at www.deandresegovia.com on the show notes accompanying this episode also happening the week after is the big one for realtors whether you're a professional in the industry looking to get into the industry or are in the industry and hit basically uh, a plateau you're going to want to check out real estate imagine or re imagine this is the california association of realtors expo the big annual bash also happening at the los angeles convention center and this one's free to register unless you want to go to some of the paid events that they have prior to the exhibit floors opening on wednesday so Again, those details and how to register are available at www.deandressegovia.com, accompanying the show notes of this episode. And I bring those up because of this. Look, uh, some of you that listen to me are are, are renters. Others um, live with others that don't have to worry so much about rent. Some of you are homeowners. And some of you are looking to sell or buy. And I, I highlight these events not so much because I'm getting sponsorship for them, because I'm not. Uh, But these are events that I'm interested in and I want to go to and I have been to and they're very educational. And that is exactly the point. Because whatever area you are or in, whether you're a student, whether you're a child living with your your guardians or your parents, whether you're uh, an owner looking that either owns one house or owns multiple properties, you're all involved in real estate. And if you aren't directly involved with it, you will be at some point. Just as some decide to do something with real estate that will give them a livelihood, where others are just see it as a more passive thing. They've achieved the American dream and got a home. But the more you learn about real estate, the more you'll understand just how much it truly means to you and to everybody outside of this country that wishes they could be here to invest in real estate. So I just wanted to 
uh, point out these events where you can get reinvigorated and also more learned in the world of real estate and the things that affect real estate, whether um, it's uh, buying, selling, trading, or even renting. All these informations that are available uh, to you for, for at no charge, I recommend. By all means, take advantage of those things. It's kind of the purpose of this show, too, to educate people on the ins and outs of real estate. So whether you're a professional or someone outside of it that makes money uh, investing in real estate. So that's all I wanted to share on that point. Now, also, I want to announce that if you know somebody that uh, habla español, you can let them know that my show is now available in español. It's a limited run series. It'll probably uh, like top out between six and ten episodes, but they're once a week. They just debuted August 2nd, so by all means, please let people know. Share the links. They're available in the show notes down below, and of course, they'll be able to find it once they see it. It's exclusively hosted at my website, www.theandresagoba.com, and also Spreaker, where my show is hosted. So those links, I already told you where to find them. So, okay, and, and something else. If you've missed some of the announcements I have made over on YouTube, why aren't you on YouTube? Why aren't you following me on YouTube? Why aren't you subscribed and hit the notification bell? Go go to my YouTube channel, at Deandre Segovia, and follow me. Hit the bell so you're notified whenever a video goes up. So that about recaps most of those announcements. Let's go into dun, 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 the news. That was terrible, but whatever. I got a jingle. <laughs> okay, so a lot of these headlines are basically the same. So I'm just going to pack them together and just call it in the news of the national GP, GDP or whatever. You know, I'll just come up with something like that. But let's talk about what the housing market looks like. Everyone's talking about the housing market. Home building is not weak. Sales are up 4% with potential for more, reports Forbes.com. I won't get all that into it, but Nationwide Burson says 2019 will be a solid year for housing. This is from the housing wire.com and now from uh this one's interesting m mpa mag.com Na- nationwide economists say they expect a stable housing market in 2020 and here is a tease as to what i'll be covering more so in uh, in a little bit later in this episode who needs millennials? Generation Z is the next big housing market. I'll get back to that headline in a bit. But let's talk about what CNBC was reporting about housing supply possibly hitting new lows. At the same time, we got RTE.ie announcing that annual house price growth rate cools slightly in May. What does all this stuff mean? All these different headlines. Well, let's, let's take it into context. Home building was considered weak. Now here in California, that's like, it's nil. It doesn't exist here. But outside of the state, there's a lot of building going on. But some people are concerned that these properties aren't moving as fast, or maybe the properties that are being built are too luxurious for the average consumer to afford. But home building is still going, and the sales for new homes are up 4%, and there's talk that there's potential for more. And that's from Forbes.com. That's a nationwide number they're throwing out there, and if you want to see the breakdown of it, of course, any and every headline I talk about here or article I reference will be found at the resources section in the episode show notes. Well, when we're talking about 2019 being a solid year for a housing market, it still is a solid year for the housing market because with low inventory and still buyers shopping out there because of the relatively low mortgage rates, these in, the inventory is still moving. Some places more so than others, of course. There'll always be like those areas where things are just not moving, but generally speaking, things are moving. That's why economists are expecting the, the market to still be solid this year. But when it comes to stabilizing in the following year, like the nationwide economics expect next year to 2020 for things to stabilize is because of the nexus of how just how far up these prices can go and with the annual house and with the annual house price growth rate cooling slightly um early on in summer that's indicative that maybe just maybe in certain parts there's enough inventory to go around where it doesn't have to push the price up so high again california is an exemption because california it's its own real estate industry but for the rest of the country That sounds like good news because if the price growth stabilizes, that means it gives opportunity for buyers to better compete at a more reasonable rate for them or or price range for them than it would be for the sellers. So that means now we'll have a more even playing field between the sellers 
and the buyers. That's what all these articles mean. And that's why I start spitballing all of them all at once because I could give you the general consensus of what they're really getting at. And because we're trending down more towards first time home buyers, that's why there's a newfound attention being given to the Generation Z. Because uh, millennials, uh, for they, when every time they're polled, they say, we're fine renting. But for some reason, Generation Z is not behaving like Generation Y. Generation Y is the millennials. Because they are not all up into social media like the millennials are. And they're also interested in um, real estate for some reason. Why? Well, they just probably see things in a different light than, than the millennials did. Because this is from Aiken Standard, and they have a headline that says, Who these millennials? Generation Z is the next big housing market. And let's see how they explain it. The hot new housing segment real estate agents and builders are eyeing is Generation Z. And that's the Americans born after the millennials already explained that. Right now, the oldest segment of Generation Z is 24 years old. Said Dave Mele, president of Homes.com, millennials are the largest segment of today's home buyers. They are larger than millennials in terms of size. Currently, millennials make about a third of the U.S. housing buying market compared to Generation Z's 27% population share. But by 2026, Generation Z is expected to be the largest U.S. demographic group with about 82 million consumers. That's why home sale industry players, including Melee, are focusing on the upcoming group. So now they're forecasting, they're projecting ahead. And that's a good thing too, because some of them are planning six to seven years out. But check this out. With Generation Z moving into the housing market in a big way, there's more focus on home builders pivoting for those millennials. That means they're building more affordable homes. And this comes from Forbes.com. Another article that I was talking to or highlighting that Generation Z is moving in a big way was uh, WFAA.com, which I'm also leaving a link to. Which they basically rehashed the same thing that uh, the Aiken Standard did. Uh, but uh, let's see, that's a different article. But home builders, um, when mortgages rates went up to the, the 3%, from 3% to nearly 5% in the second half of 2018, builders felt a pinch from lower sales. Now that mortgage rates have come back down again, many home shoppers feel like they now have a second chance of buying a home and lock in a rate at a generational low. But builders aren't taking the market's improvement for granted, see? Large home building companies have been gearing up for the past several years to bring homes to the market that target first-time home buyers. Exactly. Normally, the first-time home buyer groups lead the pack in the housing recovery and the move up towards and the move up group fills in later, said uh, Jeff Meager, CEO of KB Homes. This time around, it was flipped. The millennials delayed buying for a decade. And the industry was fed by the move-up segment. Now we're finally starting to see a no more housing recovery. That's another true thing because this housing market has been insane. KB Homes has always focused heavily on first-time home buyer audience, so this is nothing new to them. But this is the first time segment is, but the first time segment is growing rapidly for that company. Miesger noted that 55% of HB's of KB's new home deliveries in the second quarter of 2019 were to first-time home buyers, which is the largest or highest percentage in the decade. Miesger attributes, oh my goodness, these ads keep popping up. You're blocking the article ads. Thank you. Where was I? Miesger, attri- <laughs> Miesger attributes, oh my goodness, I can't even pronounce anything now that I talked down to that ad. Miesger attributes some of their success in, to a, in attracting first time home buyers to KB Homes' built in order business model, which allows more personalization than some other builders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let's go to more specifics about that. But now that's it. That normally first time home buyers, I have to say, they, they're the ones that lead the market in. This past market in this past decade has been the exact opposite, where those that had money to buy bought money, and the first-time home buyers were priced out. And now that things are stabilizing, it's flipping again. And that's a sign of a true recovery in the housing market. So if you're expecting the, the impending doom or the collapse of the housing market, do not expect it to happen especially not in the way that people experienced it just over 10 years ago because that was a, a one-time phenomenon that's happened that, that really happens, but there was a lot of uh, um, me- mechanisms that were in place to make that collapse happen, and those mechanisms have either been removed or replaced with something better to not allow that to happen again. 
and we're hoping that doesn't happen again but of course we know that we're humans it could happen some other way right but the thing is don't expect it to happen that's because some people are waiting well i'm going to wait for the prices to go down in order for me to buy again yeah when the prices go down the interest rate goes up so you may be paying less for the house but you're paying more for the loan so you got to know when is the right time to buy for yourself and i always tell them if you're ready to buy now go ahead and buy now you won't regret it unless you can't afford it okay so now we're moving away from all this but then we also have the obligatory texas housing headline dallas is the top housing market for baby chasing boomers and another article literally just came in as we're talking that says the texas housing market is heating up that's that's a it's it's happening texas has a lot of land to work with their cities are spiraling they continue to grow infrastructure continue to be structured there the question is, are you willing to move to Texas for that? That's up to you. But according to this article from DallasNews.com, Dallas is the top housing market for baby chasing boomers. So something to think about. For those that want to raise a family and want to afford a house to call their own, Texas or Dallas is the destination for it. And Texas is, uh, and Dallas is a big city. You know that. Uh, they, that's, the airport is named for both cities, Dallas and Fort Worth, because they, they basically blend into one another. You can't tell the difference one and the other, just that one has a different building. That's it. Anyway, I don't want to talk about Texas right now. Okay, let's skip over to these. All right, let's, we wrapped up the major headlines. That Now let's talk about a couple of other headlines that in relation to tech. One of them, if you didn't know and you missed it, go check out my YouTube video, which I'm referencing in the, in the show notes. And that's about Amazon Turnkey. This thing is fascinating because Amazon is officially in the real estate industry now and in a big way. They partnered up with these big real estate um, firms to make something crazy where they are incentivizing buyers to buy through the turnkey program with one of their partners that they'll partner up in a real estate professional with you as a buyer. And when you close the deal, depending on how expensive of a house that you buy, Amazon offers these home services to tech out your home first before you move in. And then they also do the installation. They give you credits. They don't give you everything, but they give you a credits to buy the product and credits for the service installation. So that's pretty impressive. But I also raise my concerns because it is Amazon. And, you, and just Amazon is just as, as scary as Facebook. So just keep that in mind. But prior to that announcement, there's another one. It was Redfin and Open Door partnered to expand the iBuyer region from the resmedia.com. And this is about Redfin and Open Door, two prominent tech part, tech-powered real estate companies, announced that they are joining forces to cover a wider range of markets. Home sellers in Phoenix and Atlanta will now be able to request an open door offer using Redfin's mobile app or website. While discount brokers Redfin offers its own iBuyer services with Redfin now, the collaboration with Open Door will help. The company reach clients in markets where the program is not currently offered. Redfin will continue expanding its Redfin Now offerings. And this is something big because uh, Redfin earlier this year was continuing to make waves in tech and real estate because they are that um, I buyer brokerage, so to speak, that they've been at the forefront of this and trying to separate themselves from the pack. And they continue developing more and more partnerships to make it uh, to enter different markets and also to disrupt the antiquated form of doing real estate. So this is interesting. I, I like the direction this is going. Of course, those of us in the industry that are working right now that can't adapt fast enough will find us to be a threat to, um, to our model of business. But here's the truth. Change is inevitable. Look. It has to go in some direction somewhere. And yeah, I may be in the younger demographic of realtors and I've been on the cutting edge of technology and I don't mind the direction, but that's also the truth. If we want to service our clients better, we have to realize that this is the, the future of real estate. Look, for those of us living here in Los Angeles and Orange County, it's not easy to get from point A to point B. You have to drop absolutely everything that you're doing just to commute, to go meet with a client face to face and then see some of these properties and you're stuck in traffic for hours on end. It's the most inefficient way to do business when you can't do business. So if there's things that can be uh, improved upon 
through the assistance of technology, by all means, I say, let's adapt. Some people are, are scared of change. I'm not. I, I like this. If, again, for those of you that are threatened, it's about not resting on your laurels anymore and just get on the up and up. If you don't have anyone on your staff that isn't up to date with tech, how are you running your business? You got to get in on it because the model that we currently have can't stick around forever. And this is definitely going to shake up, especially with Amazon throwing their hat in the ring. Now, I st- I believe in the old school and new tech. And I believe that there's a nexus between those two. And I think I struck that. So I'll see how things continue on. But I'm constantly checking. What are these guys doing? What can I improve upon to make my services better? Because, hey, that's that to me is just about keeping up. That's just the truth. Okay, and that about does it for that article. I want to close out on a real estate related article, but it's not exactly uh, anything that affects real estate directly. The way this indirectly affects real estate, it's called um, a buyer influence. Because how many of you have heard of HGTV? I hate that channel. Property Brothers was the only show that I would watch, but even those shows I didn't like. And then there's all these over-the-top uh, agents. and Look, these people want to be their own stars, so they have to prop up this fake persona to get the ratings. And it's just so annoying. But here's the most unrealistic thing of just about everything. They are not doing those jobs here in Los Angeles. <laughs> they cannot pull those shows off here in Los Angeles, not even Orange County. Like, when, every time I see it, it's like, well, that's so unrealistic. We have all this job to do with permits and all that. We got to finish it in four months. It's like, you finished it? Wow. I'm sure you skipped on a few inspections. So what article am I talking about? This is from TheWrap.com. HGTV says the Windy City Rehab is currently in production despite code violations and city-wide suspensions for its hosts. Chicago has suspended host Allison Victoria from more filming permits. Her TV contractor got an even stiffer uh, sentence. Season 2 of HGTV's Windy City Rehab is currently in production, HGTV spokeswoman tells the, the rap. In HGTV spokeswoman tells the rap, despite the city of Chicago suspending host Allison Victoria Gormenos, known as t- known on TV as Allison Victoria, from filing more work permits after numerous code violations, the city of Chicago took the punishment a step further for her on-air contractor Donovan Eckhart, suspending both his residential real estate developer license, and his gray mark development company's general contractor license for one year, according to filings obtained by The Wrap. Issues related to Windy City Rehab have been carefully reviewed, the HGTV uh, spokeswoman said. The appropriate parties are in communication with local building officials and working to resolve any outstanding issues. Season 2 of the series is currently in production. The cable channel spokeswoman did not elaborate on what facets of the house flipping series were still in production. If either Greminos or Eckhart or the companies associated with them could file more, um, more permits with the city. The HGTV uh, statement comes after the city issued stop work orders, stop work orders on several of the duo's properties, including some of which were intended to be featured on season two. Over what a spokesman for the city described pattern of unsafe work and building code violations i'm stopping right there this article goes on and on and on but oh my goodness i love this thing because this is this is what happens behind the scenes like the restaurant impossible we're gonna remake this entire restaurant in 24 hours and open to the clients in less than 72 like well who's inspecting these things who's making sure they're safe now how, how did they get away with this stuff unless someone's paying somebody no, and so now HGTV taking a task. Property Bros were in trouble at some point. Also, um, the other guy, like the, oh my goodness, the, the over the top guy from HGTV that's always walking down the street talking to the camera. Let's find out if they're gonna want to go for this property or not. And then they go talk to the clients. Like, oh my goodness, you do this every single episode. It's so annoying. Like this guy thinks of himself as high and mighty, and sure enough, that he's just he's a fraud. But anyway, yeah, HGTV always is an issue with my buyers because it 
It paints this picture that's unrealistic, like people, that's television, that's not real. Oh, can we break open this wall for a more open concept? No, because it's a load-bearing wall. You break that, you bring the house down. It's like, oh, okay, but can we make this into a bathroom? Not without permits. And as I saw right here, you need to upgrade the electrical, you need to upgrade the plumbing, you need to upgrade the mechanical before you can even touch the bathroom. You know, it's like, there's a lot of different things that go into it. Yeah, but why is it going to take so long to get it done? Because the inspector said so. We have to go in phases. There's the rough inspection, there's the progress inspection, and eventually the final inspection, and those are never in succession of one another. There's usually a follow-up inspection because the inspector says, I don't like that, do it again. Hey, I didn't notice that the first time. Get that done too. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with what we're doing here. Get it done anyway, or I'm not signing off. Oy. How do I know this, folks? Because I, too, am a contractor. Yes, I mentioned it before. JS Construction is a contracting company where I worked most of my time and that's where I got my experience in real estate because from there to property management and eventually a broker. So that's the way my journey goes and I still do all three to this day. That's why I'm always up to date with these different codes that they keep changing every single year. But yeah, anyway, that's just my vent about HGTV. Believe me, I hate HGTV. Okay, but that about does it for this. That's all I really had to cover in terms of headlines. Like I said, every headline was basically the same. It's just uh, from a different outlet. And that does it for the news round. So that's the way the news goes. It didn't really go much of anywhere, right? Yeah, that's a pretty straightforward thing. Well, since that wraps it up for me, I guess that means I'll see you on the next episode. But before I let you go, just remember, you can follow me on Twitter. You can find, oh, speaking of Twitter, um, I retired the newsreel. So now the official Twitter handle has replaced the newsreel handle. So if you already bookmarked, because you're not following me, but you bookmarked my Twitter page, you'll notice that it's back to the Segovia RES handle. So you're going to have to find the underscore Andres Segovia to get the news digest that I impart here. Whereas the Segovia RES is back down to being my um my my real estate uh attention and and sales pitching area so just give you an fyi there that was a change that happened before this episode went up um it took some time to think about it but i finally did it and i announced it on youtube so you didn't follow me on youtube that's probably why you didn't know about the change so that's it remember facebook instagram youtube my website and twitter i'm everywhere send your comments send your questions thank you for your support I'll see you on the next episode.